This time I'm going to show you how to make this useful quilted tote bag with a zip in the top. So if you're making um, a tote bag from scratch and you wanted to add a zip, maybe there isn't one in your pattern already, this is a very simple way of doing it because the whole of this zip section is sewn in separately and it has a nice long tab on one side so that we can open the bag right up so you've still got all of the space in there. Now there are different ways of doing this. Um, this way has this as a completely separate unit which is then sewn into the lining as you can see. You can incorporate this into the lining, you could have two tabs, one on each end and have the kind of hanging over the end of the bag on each side but this is the way that we're going to do this one because I think this is probably going to be the easiest way to do it but it would make a simple tote bag a lot more secure so again as long as you are constructing the bag you can't really put this in one that's finished um, but if you're making the bag then this is an easy addition to put into any simple tote bag to add the zip in the center there now I've used um, a Bosal single-sided fusible foam stabilizer because I love the way that it looks when it's quilted. Um, the stitches just sink into the fabric and it gives you a real dimensional look. The fabric that I've used is from one of my Eden panels and um, I've quilted it in between the trees. So I haven't pieced these two pieces together. That's one print of fabric, but it looks like it's two that I've very cleverly pattern matched and sewn together, but I'm not taking credit for that. I can just take the credit for designing the fabric in the first place. Um, so I've got nice long handles on this one. You could make those longer and shorter. Um, you could increase the size of the bag if you wanted to. So basically, I think I'm just giving you the skeleton or the, the template so that you can either make exactly what I've made here or you can make it slightly different if you prefer. The bag behind me here is exactly the same size but the balance of the two different colours is a little bit different. As you can see I've got um, the darker colour is shorter on the bottom of this one and the handles on this one are a lo lot longer as well. So if you prefer something that you can throw right over your shoulder or just something over your arm then you can measure those and accommodate as you wish. Okay so I've put all of the, um, the cutting instructions in the details below and uh, go out and choose your fabric, cut out your pieces and, uh, and we'll get sewing. So I have my ingredients cut out already so the outer and the lining pieces, two of each of those, are cut to 14 inches square. I've also cut a two inch square from the bottom corner of each piece, so from both outer pieces and both lining pieces. On the outer sections, I've fused Bosal single-sided um, foam to the wrong side and as you can see I've quilted and I thought because this fabric has um, trees kind of spaced diagonally that it'll look nice to quilt exactly in between the trees diagonally. So I've just sewn a straight stitch in between all of those lines. So the lining again cut to the same size as the outer fabric. Um, I've already made one handle. And this is 22 in, oh, sorry, 26 inches by 4 inches wide. And what I did here was to use an H630 interfacing. You could use a bosal if bosal is all that you have. But if so, cut one strip of bosal, which is 3 quarters of an inch wide, and just use the one piece. It'll be too bulky if you do four. And I've used this just fused straight onto the back of my fabric. So H630 is a Valiseline product and it is a, a fusible fleece. So it gives a nice kind of chunky finish to my bag. And as I've ironed, I've actually just clipped along the edge because it's a little bit thick to pin. I would use some kind of interfacing or stabiliser, just um, an iron-on medium weight interfacing would be fine but just something to give a bit more stability a bit more sturdiness to the bag and that makes the handle stand up as well which looks quite nice so i'll top stick that in just a second i have a 17 inch zip and the zip panels which go each side of here measuring at 10 inches by two and a half inches and then I've got one piece of fabric which measures one and a half inches by three inches and that's what's going to go around the end of my zip. So I'll do that in just a second. I'm just going to finish off the strap and they can go out of the way until we start to construct the bag. So I just need to top stitch along each side. And again, I have put all of the measurements in the description box below. So if you're in, uh, in centimetres, if you're metric instead of imperial, then all of those measurements will be there as well. So what I'm going to do here is to just top stitch along each side. Uh, 
and we can put that to one side for now. Now to make the little tab that's going on the end of the zip, and you could put a tab on each end of the zip if you prefer, mine's just going to have the tab on one end, and um, if you put the zip on the tab on both ends of the zip, you may need to have that zip a little bit longer to accommodate. But what I am going to do is to just chop off both ends of the zip, which is why I like, I like them nice and long so I can do this because I don't want to risk sewing over the metal stoppers. You could just take the stoppers off if you wanted to, but just as easy to just nip those off at each end. Do be aware now that the zip slider may come off if you slide it too far. Then we're going to take our small piece of fabric and fold the short edges over to the wrong side by a quarter of an inch, five millimetres, and press. And then this I'm going to fold back on itself, like so, and sew down each side. And that's going to give me a nice little pocket to put the end of the zip in. So using again my quarter of an inch seam allowance, let's just sew, like so. And the same on this side. And then we'll turn this the right side out. So it's just a pair of tweezers may help. I'm not going to snip across the corner. I'm just going to fold the those sides over and then push it through. So it's only a tiny little pocket. There's lots of different ways of doing this. So you may have done it a different way. You may have seen other people do it a different way, but this is the way that I like to do it. Ooh, and then we're going to just push out the corners like so. Fold the end over. And you should have a little pocket that measures an inch, two and a half centimeters across. And this will slip very nice, neatly over the edge or the end of your zip. So again, we'll just push that inside. You could use a little spot of um, glue from a glue stick in there if you wish, just to hold that in place. I'm not going to with this one. So that sits in there. And then I'm going to sew all the way around the edge in a box shape. Stop with the needle end as you pivot. Be aware you are sewing over quite a thick fabric when you're going over the zip and all these layers together. So it may be an idea to use a denim or a jeans needle on your sewing machine to help you go through the layers a little bit easier. Just going to snip off that thread. Make this nice and neat. I've used a contrasting thread. I'm actually using white on this one. But um, if you're concerned about not sewing accurately and straight, then the same colour thread would be advisable. And there we go. And that's finished. And let's just snip off the ends. So now let's put on the sides of the zip. So first thing I'm going to do with these pieces is to fold the ends under by a quarter of an inch again. Or oh, don't worry about this being too exact as long as they're all the same because we still need all of these pieces to measure exactly the same length. We'll do that in just a second before we start sewing, I think. And this one. And the same on these final two. If your fabric doesn't um, doesn't want to crease very well. Remember, you've always got your best press or your spray starch just to help it hold a crease because we really want this to stay in place as we're sewing. And there's my final piece. 
And of course, if you're making bags in different sizes, the size or the length of these may vary. I've gone by the length of my finished base of the bag, which is 10 inches. And then this will be slightly smaller because I've got the seam allowance as each side. Oh, sorry, where I folded over. So let me just line all of these up again just to check that they are all the same length because that's quite important here. I want everything to match and they are. And then we'll sew these in place. So I'm going to go right sides together. Oops, that's the right side. But on this end, I'm just going to fold the end of the zip inwards like so. Um, if you want to use again a um, new glue stick or put a few hand stitches in there to hold it in place, that one's run out, then of course you can do. I would use a glue stick but I can't find it. So we shan't. Um, <laughs> oh there we are. Always lose things that are right in front of you, don't you? Um, oh only me then. So again I'm just going to fold the zip at a right angle to itself like that. And I'll pop a clip on there just to hold it for now. And I'm going to do the same on the opposite side of the zip. So just fold that away. And so it may be advisable if you don't have a glue pen to, um, to just put a few hand stitches in there to hold them in place. Whoops before you put this into the zip panels. So it's looking like that. And then this is going to go right sides together. So which I've got two different colored fabrics. So decide which, which fabric you want facing up and which one's facing down. I think I'll have that one on the inside because I've got a, a slightly different color going across there. I didn't know that was there. So I'll have this on the top. So I've got my zip slider facing up here. So I'm going to flip that over right sides together. And just hold that little bit in the corner. And then I'm going to sew, I'm going to line that up right at the edge actually. There we go. And I'm going to sew down the center of the zip tape. Now if you wanted to put a little bit more glue on here to hold it in place, that's fine. You may not need to, you may prefer to pin, you may prefer to hand tack. And I'm doing this one side at a time as I normally do with the zip so I can see exactly where I'm sewing. So let's move the needle over to the left hand side. put enough glue on there. Open this up and I'm going to sew straight down the centre of the zip tab, uh, the zip tape, sorry. So when I fold this back, the end of the zip disappears into the edge of the fabric. And then I can put the second half of the fabric over the top, line up the edges, the folded edges so they meet. And I'm going to sew along the same stitch line that I've just sewn. caught the edge of there. There we go. So I'm lining up the two raw edges together. I want to make sure that these ends meet here so that the fabric is just the same size. Whoops, there we go. Just making sure the ends meet. That's quite important.
and there's my zip trapped in between the two pieces and neatly just disappearing into the end. So take your time um, when you're doing this. Um, you can pin, you can clip, you can use your glues, but we just want to make sure that all four pieces of fabric are nice and square and lined up at the top. So this is how we are at the moment. So again, the point there is lined it with the edge of the folded fabric and make sure the fold stays folded at the end. This time I'm going to find it easier to sew from the bottom, which is why I'm clipping this in place. And flip this over. And just keep lining at those edges again. And just like before, I'm going to sew down the zip tape. The reason I'm sewing from the bottom upwards is because I like to have the fabric on the left hand side of my needle as often as I can. And just what I'm used to doing, so. Away we go. Now I'm just going to take this out because the folded bit of the end of my zip kind of popped out as I was sewing. So I just want to fold that back in again. And so. So the end of the zip is folded at a right angle and the end of the fabric here is still folded under. That's better. So at this point, I'm going to pull the zip together. It may look a little bit odd at the moment. There we go. Because I want to make sure that these ends are straight and this end is straight as well. So I'm happy with that. Now I can sew on the other half, because if it wasn't, if, if I happen to have sewn it so that one side is slightly higher than the other, you will notice that when it's in the bag. So it's in, it is important to make sure that those lines are straight across there. And then we can just sew on the opposite side of the lining, which is quite easy now. So let's again move the zip out of the way. We're ignoring that bit for now. Place the second half over here. I'm going to sew from this side because I can see the stitch line already. So line up again the edges of the folded fabrics here and then sew all the way down. Careful not to pull or stretch your fabric because we really want these pieces to fit. And just as I'm approaching this end here, I can double check that these folded ends here are matching. You can always kind of rearrange it at this point if they're not. Right, time to iron it. So put the zip together. See the ends are disappearing nicely into the ends of the fabric. And we'll press that fabric away from the zip. Now the next thing we need to do is to sew these raw edges right sides together. So I'm going to fold this side out of the way, so that's going to roll up to the zip, and then fold this section over, open it out, and I've got the two raw edges right sides together with the zip and the opposite side rolled up in the middle. And then we'll sew down this side, but don't trap all of that fabric in the stitch line as you sew. Just keep moving that out of the way if you need to. So it will feel a, a little bit lumpy there, but I'm not concerned about that. And it will be rather creased up when we turn this through. But again, that, that doesn't matter. 
So let's pull this through now. So just gently by pulling on the opposite side of the zip, the whole thing should turn through to the right side very easily. So just keep going with it. There we go. And then we'll need to do the same with the opposite side. So again, it all looks a little bit crumpled at the moment. So the side that I've just sewn, I'm now going to roll up. And with this side, as before, roll it over so that the raw edges of the right sides together. And so with the zip and the opposite side all rolled up in the middle there. So again, make sure that the ends are folded over like they were before under the needle. And so. And again, just keep matching at the raw edges. So stop every now and again with your needle down. Make sure that when you're approaching this end, those ends are still folded under. And then we'll turn this the right side out. So again, I'm going to grab that sausage shape from in the center and pull this all through. And then back to the iron, because this is looking rather crumpled at the moment. Let's make this so that the seam is sitting right on the edge. The ends are still folded under. They may want to pop out if you're not careful. So just ease them back in again if they do. So that is the panel practically finished. So before I put this into the lining, I'm going to top stitch along the short ends and by the side of the zip. I don't need to top stitch across the bottom because that's where it's going to be sewn into the bag. off any loose ends and then we'll pop this onto the lining so let's take the two lining pieces I'm just going to place them together and fold in half I'm just going to crease the center point at the top here. Then I'm going to take my little ruler and I'm going to fit mine two inches from the top. So I'm just going to draw a line at the two inch mark with an erasable pen. And what I'll also need to do is to mark the center of the fabric here as well. I don't know where these threads come from. There's little loops of thread sticking out everywhere. Okay, so crease that again to mark the center. If you can't see the crease or a pen mark, then stick a pin in there.
and there's another one look don't know where they come from and then this is going to sit along that line there now it's up to you I'm going to see the top stitches if you don't want to see them then sew from the bottom this way so the zips facing upwards towards the top of the bag the center marks are matched here and there. Pop a pin in. And we'll sew across here. So make the seam nice and strong by reversing slightly. And then sew straight across quite close to the edge so no more than a quarter of an inch or five millimeters doesn't have to be a wide seam allowance and then we'll do the same with the other side so out come the pins flip that out of the way And then this is going to go facing upwards again with the center mark matching the mark that I've just made. And we'll sew this in place. And then out come the pins. So you can see that's what my lining is going to look like. So that's the top of the lining and the rest of it is, well it's like that. So now we can sew the lining pieces together. So these need to go right sides together. So the zips kind of trapped in the center. Make sure this tail is tucked right out of the way and it's back to just making a regular bag now really so we're going to sew along each side and across the bottom and I'm going to leave a turning gap in the side this time so I can turn the whole thing through so again if you prefer to pin then do so but I'm, I'm not going to for speed's sake with this one we'll just get to the sewing When it comes to the bottom corners, I'm going to pull the two sides of the cutout corners away from each other and push the seam allowances in opposite directions and sew straight across and do the same with the opposite side. So that's how my lining is looking with the zip panel sitting there in the center. So we'll need to sew together the outer pieces of the bag. First of all, I'm going to put the handles on. You can make these handles any, any length you like. These are quite long, but I like them that way. Um, and I'm going to put these three inches from each side. So I'll just hold those in place with a little clip. And I've used um, the contrasting fabric for each handle on this one. So I've got one dark handle and one light one, which I thought might be quite fun because I've got a dark fabric and a lighter fabric on the panel that I've used. Um, and I thought that would just um, echo the design. So just match those up that way. Make sure that's not twisted. If you've gone from one of these, uh, for one of these panels from my website, um, you do have enough fabric to use the same colour handle if you wanted to. You don't, you don't have to have two different coloured handles. 
a bit of fluff on there. Right, let's do that again. So just matching those up so that the straps are the same on each side. And I'm just going to sew across the ends to hold those in place. So now these two go right sides together. Make sure the handles are, let's put those right out of the way. Handles out of the way of the seam. We'll line these up. If you wanted to hold these together with a few clips, that's fine. Might be a bit thick to pin. What I do want to make sure though, is that the join of the pattern matches on each side here. So I am going to put a little clip into each side because I can always ease it a little bit if they don't match and it will kind of stand out a little bit if they don't match. And that goes there. And then we'll sew all the way around apart from the cutout corners, then squish those to make the base square, just like we did with the lining. And we can turn this the right side out and then we'll drop the lining in place. So just push out the corners and make sure that I've caught all of the fabric. Sometimes you don't. Yep, happy with all that. Now this needs to go inside the lining, right sides together. So we'll need to open the zip all the way so I can fit that inside. And then drop the outer bag inside the lining and just make sure that the end of the zip and the handles, anything like that, is just sticking inside, out of the way of the seam as we sew around the top. So you go in there. Then I'm going to match up the side seams, clip it, and this one, and clip it. It may seem a little bulky here, but you've got a lot more outer bag than you do lining, so it may want to fight back a little bit and try and jump back out. And that goes on there. And then we'll sew all the way around the top, and I'm going to try and keep the handles pointing at a right angle away from me. So I'm going to take off my accessory compartment this time, push this underneath, and so. So again, I'm just lining up the edges of the fabric as I go. Keep it nice and straight. If you stop, stop with your needle down. Don't worry about this kind of bulkiness getting in the way. Just make sure that it's your, the seams, uh, sorry, the edges of the fabric match. And again, this will, will all be a little bit crumpled when we turn it through, but that's the nature. That's over a handle. So again, if you keep those pointing at a right angles, they're going to sit nicer when you turn this through. It's very easy for you to kind of approach the handles and they've moved a little bit. That one has, it's, it's going off in that direction and it, it won't hang straight when you turn it through. So I'm just realigning it to make sure that it's at right angles. There we go, that's quite simple. and then we'll turn this the right side out. Might have left the hole a little bit small actually but we'll, we'll soon find out if you hear any stitches cracking. So let's pull this through. There we go. Then I have a hole in the side that I need to sew over. So I'm just going to pull the two sides of those away from each other so that the seam allowance folds in and sew that on the machine. Ideally, I'd use the same colour fabric and if you wanted complete invisibility of your seam, then um, hand sew that with a ladder stitch, but I don't think it really matters. So straight down the edge of the folds. Let's make sure I've caught all of those. There we go.
There, and now we can push the lining inside the bag. Couple of things to do. So I'm going to fold the end, the edge of the bag and uh, more threads look. With the seam on the top. Now I am folding the bows all over so it, it may feel as though it wants to bounce back a little bit. So again, let's put this under the machine. I can lengthen the stitch a little bit because this is a top stitch and I am sewing through quite thick layers so that may help. And again, I'm just folding this under so that the lining is inside. And your straps are facing upwards. As you're sewing over the straps again, actually, it gives it um, another little bit of strength. Because you'll be sewing over the ends of the strap, as you can hear there, the fabric's quite thick. So just keep pulling that back. And then it'll need ironing again. Now you could make this bag with a, a softer um, interfacing, as I said before. I've chosen a Bosal foam because I like the way that it quilts. Because of the thickness of the foam, you can really see the quilt lines and I, I do like that. I know there are other brands, I haven't used them. I, I tend to stick with what I like and I like this one, but you could use um, I also like a Valiseline H630 or 8640, so that would give you a much softer bag. Still, you know, quite firm. It's a jo jolly decent bag. Um, but if you didn't want the firmness or you haven't sewn through something like this before, you may want to try a lighter weight of interfacing first. So if the H630 and 40 are fusible fleece, so they're a little bit softer. All right, so give it a final iron. I'd normally now take this over to the big ironing board, but this will be fine for now. One thing with the bosal, um, if it wrinkles, which it will do, look it's all wrinkly again because I've just turned it the right side out, um, or if you find it lifts a little bit, a little bit of steam, waft it over the creases and they just melt away. I'm just going to fold the bottom up so I can get a nice crease around the bottom. I have got steam on on this one. The same on this side. So I'm not pressing on too hard. If you've got a tailor's ham, then put that inside the bag. I just want the steam to travel through the fabric. And that is my bag done. So let's poke out the base again. More loose threads to trim away. That needs pressing on the inside as well, actually. So let's do this. So I'm just going to press around the top to make it look a little bit neater. That's nicer, isn't it? And just over the end bits there. There, so now you've got a nice firm bag with plenty of room inside it with a secure zip across the top. And the reason I like to cut to around about the same size as the base is so that when the bag's full, this area is the same as the base, it keeps it nice and square. If this is a little bit too narrow, then it's going to pull the sides together, which is absolutely fine as well. So maybe you prefer that look, but I like this, that kind of the squareness of the bag. So that's why I've chosen to make it this size and that sits perfectly inside. So when you're all zipped up and you're ready to go, you can pop the end of the tab inside there and that makes it look nice and neat.
and we're all done I'm ready to go ready to go shopping maybe <laughs> bugs big enough um, okay so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I'm going to do adapt this for different sizes different lengths of straps different lengths of zips tabs on both ends of the zips but if you've not fitted a zip like this before I just wanted to show you how simple that actually is and how effective so if you're constructing a bag if you're making a bag from scratch that's the kind of zip that you can put into any kind of tote bag as long as it doesn't interfere with interior pockets and things like that so I hope you found this useful and I'll see you next time bye bye